Yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Loza and we've won the first BT16 locals with Rapid Mon. It feels so damn good. Uh, all the testing starting to pay off. So uh, let's get straight into it. We're going to talk about matchups as well. We are, oh, they've just flipped around. We've switched our egg for the Wanyo, sorry, the Niaro Mon because it gives plus a thousand when suspended and that really combos well with a lot of the cards in this deck like the starter deck Terrium Mon that does the same thing. And the starter deck rapid one that does the same thing. So that's a lot of plus a thousand when suspended all turns. It's very relevant when you're trying to make ace plays or rapid X plays. And one gummy mon there for drawing a card. You've got to play five eggs, guys, because we are playing that Willis. You know how it be flipping eggs and stuff. If you ever play a Uko Mon or a deck with Mimi, you need to be uh, having multiple eggs. So you can see we've got those five eggs there ready to roll. Uh, the plus a thousand is just the format thing. It's BT16. You need to compete with Magnamon and Tyrant Kabuterimon and so many other decks where you need the plus 1000 DP. It's definitely the egg to play right now, but I still love Gummymon. But yeah, it's just not Gummymon's time, sadly. But that'll do for the eggs. Let's get into the level threes. Um, I like my searches. You're going to notice. I really like my searches. Three of the add a two color green card uh, and a Henry. We're not playing any Henrys though. Spoiler. Uh, and then four. Did I say three? I meant four. Sorry. Four of this searcher and four of this searcher. This one looks at more. This one has an inheritable with alliance. That never matters. So these are essentially just vanilla cards that just search. Um, a lot of people just don't max on these and like that's cool. But I really like maxing on them. So. There's your eight searcher rookies, and I'm just going to display this option here. I know it's not quite its time, but we do have four copies of Double Typhoon. Now, Double Typhoon searches for a green tamer and a green Digimon, and then uh, Delay Effect, you can play one of these and search again. So the amount of searching I do in this deck is quite intense, but I like that. Like, that's how I really thrive with the deck, and I, I don't think I'm going to change that anytime soon. But let me know what you think about the eight search. I know a lot of people play, like, uh, three and three, or, like, just one of them and two of the other. But I'm just set on eight, and... Yeah, I know people like to cut rookies for text, but we'll get into my text later and why none of them worked. Um, <laughs> it was very strange. The Terrier from the structure, it's a king. It lets you play green tamers for cheaper. Uh, there's not much more to say about it other than card is pretty good. Uh, good inheritable as well. The plus 1000, as we mentioned earlier. Very good. Very good. And the last three Terriers we were playing today was the Terrier X, the new guy. He is pretty damn good. It's not like on the level of... Uh, I don't know, this Terriamon. Piercing as an inheritable is pretty nice, not gonna lie. But it wasn't like I needed it all day. So I think the three was actually good. Um, so yeah, we are playing just short of 16 rookies, I believe. Should be playing 15. Um, but yeah, the effect to evolve for one cost less is only really relevant on this one because this one says Terrier in name. So this Rapid will evolve on this for two, which is pretty damn good. But on the other Rapid, it will still cost 3 because of the way it's worded, unfortunately. So on this older Rapid, it will evolve for 3 still. But then, of course, if you can tap Willis's and stuff, it's really nice. But obviously, this Terry Monex Antibody is really good with the Rapid Monex Antibody because this normally gets to Blitz Swing when you evolve into it. So I found that to be really nice to have the Piercing Guy under there when you're doing that. And the last level 3 I played, it's not really a level 3, it has no level, but I'm going to do it here with the level 3s because it kind of goes along with it, is Calamon. And Calamon... People are sleeping on this card, and I'll talk about why I'm playing it, because a lot of people think it's useless, and I've heard a lot of discourse around it, and a lot of people saying card bad because it just replaces itself when you evolve, and you gain one memory. So you play it for one if you have a Terriamon out. By the way, X anybody doesn't count. Just know that has to be Terriamon, uh, with just, not Terriamon name, like pure Terriamon. So you do have to have one of the earlier 12 Terriamons out, either these ones or the Searcher ones. Play this for one, and then next time you evolve, or any time you evolve on your turn, you're able to tap this, draw one. Uh, sorry, I'm getting it to focus. Draw one, gain one, so it pays for itself, and then you and, and replaces itself in hand, and then you gain 3k for the turn. So that's the real reason we're playing. As I mentioned earlier, this is the format where DP is king. We're going back to Unga Bunga Monkey. So with with Nyaromon, the plus 1,000 there, and with the plus 3k from Calamon, that's already plus 4k, right? That's that's nice to confirm when you're trying to beat into Magna X or Tyrant or anything similar, you know what I mean? So um, I find it to be quite good, this format. I'm just playing one and tested it out, and it was quite good today. This could potentially become a two, because when I talk about some of the other one of techs that didn't go well, well, yeah, we'll get to them, because they're options. Um... Rookie lineup seemed really solid today. I was pretty happy with it. I'm happy to cut the Lopmon 
If you notice, the last build had the Lopmon. Uh, it's gone, and the Memory Set Terriamon's gone, or the EX2 Terriamon, whichever one you want to play, they're gone. Uh, we're just playing Terry X now because Terriamon X is um, the GOAT. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far, but let me know if you like that rookie lineup or not. And we'll move straight along to the level 4 lineup, which you're going to be real surprised hasn't changed at all. We're going to play 4 of the Strata, Structure Deck, Starter Deck, whatever you want to call it, Rapid Mon, Advanced Deck, or whatever they're called. Um, it's really good. Inheritable plus 1,000 plus its effect to be a blocker and armor purge and all that stuff. And we're going to play our level 4 BT8 Rapid, which, man, this card is just a board wiper. Like, all today, this card just came out and just saved my ass when I was behind. Like, it's so good. Now, I'm just going to mention, like, you guys probably already know, but this can go on here, or, or the other one. Rapid X can just go on any of these, and Mega Gargoyles can just go on any of these. So just point that out. I know I'm just showing off all my Megas now. I'm playing eight Megas. They can just go on top of these, but I'm not done there. I'm playing more Rapid Mons. I'm also playing the four level five. Uh, the level five one's quite good. It was probably the brickiest of all today, so I could see myself putting it to three after today, but that's strictly on today's results. Um, it just doesn't come up as much as I thought it would this format. It's still quite good, but it often was what I used to pass turn by either evolving for three or hard slamming for seven. It's like sometimes it was amazing and like it helps you get back in the game, but against like some decks with DP reduction, it's just kind of pointless to do that because they just doubt it because it's only 7k. But um, against like red and purple decks, it's obviously very, very good because the protection you get, once again, you need a green tamer. Um, so sometimes you just don't have that for one. But two, um, sometimes they can just out it with other effects, right? Which really sucks. It is one of the best ones to blast ace on top of. Um, I mean, you can also just rapid X on top of it. And the main reason you do want to evolve on top of this one is because you get that cracked inheritable where uh, you get to trash a sec if you make a trade. So... It's kind of nuts because now, in theory, you could have a stack that has the piercing, has this rapid, and then you could either be, you know, X anybody or, or um, Mega Gargo Ace. It doesn't really matter which one you are. But in theory, you could have this as your lineup. You could be swinging in with Blitz, basically, because that's what this guy does on Evo. And then when you hit a body, you're going to trash a sec, pierce for one, and you're going to get the rapid X effect to gain two memory if you killed something in battle or by DP reduce. So... That is kind of crazy, right? The the stuff you can get in your stack now is definitely cracked. But, um, yeah, I don't think I need to show the level 5s or the level 6s, rather. But, you know what? Well, here they are. Um, the level 6s in this deck are just so good now. And can I say it feels amazing to have a play on your turn that's not an ace card? Like, I'm sure a lot of people know Mega Gargamon Ace is amazing. Absolutely sensational card. But it does have a big fault, and that is being an ace card. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about the deck's faults as well as their pluses, because obviously playing the deck for so long, you really find out what's good and you really find out what's bad. So Mega Gargamon Ace is probably one of the most oppressive ace cards in the game, I want to say. Uh, how easy it is to use in this deck is crazy, because you can search it off all of the searches. You can evolve off all of the level 4s, all of the level 5s. Like, that's just crazy. You have 12 cards that can digivolve into it. And obviously, if you have hidden potential discovered, going into these can be game-breaking, I want to say. Um, especially because this will cost 5, and this will cost 4 on a, a level 4 rapid. So making that free is just stupid. And for those of you who don't know, hidden potential discovered combos really well with Double Typhoon. Because if you've got the Double Typhoon already up there, and you can use the delay to play a Terriamon for free, get a search, and then you just tap that uh, Terriamon with hidden potential discovered, because it's not swinging anyway. And uh, yeah you kind of just chill and go into one of these on one of your other rapids. Um, this card, once again, lets you do things going, uh, like going, just lets you play it on board, sorry, digivolve into it on board, so that you're not digivolving into this. Because obviously on your turn, you don't normally want to digivolve into this, you really want to pressure it on your opponent's turn. Sometimes there is a good scenario where you'll digivolve into your ace on your turn, but you know how aces are, you kind of want to bait your opponent into hitting you and then you do it. This is such a good card for that. Because this puts out a blanket neg 4 effect, and your opponent has to play around that, and they're thinking about playing around that, and the gain 2 memory as well is all turns. So they're thinking, how can I play around Rapid X? And they're trying to deal with that. And then when they do eventually do some silly attack, you can just be like, oh, punished. You can literally digivolve this on here. That is so dumb. <laughs> it's 5 on any Rapid, which lets you do it here, because it's Rapid in name. And this is Rapid in name. So... 
I love that about the sixes in this deck. So I mentioned earlier, Mega Gargamon Ace can go over uh, all of these fours, all of these fours, and all of these fives. Well, it can also go over all of these sixes right here. So how dumb is that? Mega Gargamon Ace goes over 16 cards in the deck. Is that right? 16 Rapid Mons in the deck. Yes, that is correct. This card can go on 16 cards in the deck. It got better, this format. It got better. And obviously Rapid X is just sensational. So together, these are a dynamic duo. And I'm going to play eight sixes. I don't care. I'm going to play eight sixes because once again, they did evolve on fives and fours. Like they're basically being cheated out. It's it's crazy. This deck is insane. All right, let's get to the Tamers. You guys are going to be surprised and probably hate it. One Mimi, because it's, let's be real. BT1 Mimi is the best green Tamers that's ever existed. Being able to hybrid for game by tapping her, by promoting a Terrymon and hitting them for free, as long as you just have one of the, the big guys out, is just crazy. Um, obviously, you're sitting on normally this most games, so it's it's quite good with Mimi. And obviously, having eight level sixes now, <laughs> we actually trigger Mimi a lot more. So you know what? Mimi could go up in future, but uh, one one seems fine. And um, the, here's the kicker. Uh, three Willis, and that's it. There's, there's my green tamer lineup. Four tamers. So another reason for the egg switch, um, you'll notice the gummy mon is obviously draw when you have a green tamer, and we've got four green tamers. Now, you might be wondering why, and some people like to play Henry. I'm just going to hit you with the cold water. Every Henry that's ever been printed is kind of ass. Uh, none of them are really useful enough. Um, the best one's probably the structure deck one, and if you want to use it for the warp, you need to play a Gargomon. And if you've noticed, all the level 4s in this deck are not Gargomons. They're Rapid Mons. And you wouldn't want to play Gargomon. I know lists do. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong that lists play level 4 Gargomons. But just think about it. You have games where you promote your Terriamon, right? Let's say I promote my Terriamon. And I am I need to come back. Like, I'm in a losing situation. How does Digivolving into Gargomon help me at all? And I could go into this. Or I could go into this. Both of these cards do two things. One, they're going to DP minus something on the board. This one on Digivolve, this one if you do a cheeky attack or block. But more than that, both of these cards can become this. Or they can become, I mean, you all know this, but sometimes you just got to see it. Or they can become this. It is so important to just threaten that on your opponent, especially when you're behind. You need to promote, go into one of these to pass, and then just say... Yep, okay, off you go. And they have to play around the ace now, even if you don't have it. Or if, you know, going into one of these doesn't pass turn, you can happily go into Rapid X and say, now you've got to play around this. And if you don't, you know, I can potentially go into this. So, honestly, I don't think you should play a single Gargomon. That's just me. Obviously, Mega Gargomon, but that doesn't really count. I'm talking about the level 4 Gargomons. I know one can give jamming. Wow, whoop de doo I don't think you really care about that. And the other Gargamons can evolve for cheap. Uh, it's, it's whatever. We've got level 4s in this deck that act like level 6s. And we've got level 6s in this deck that act like level 7s. Like, I don't think we need to beat around the bush and play bad cards. Um, and Willis, once again, is going to help reduce all those expensive evolution costs. Willis, ironically, has only gotten playable because of this Terriamon. Being able to play Willis out for one is pretty sensational. It's kind of like a Ukomon effect. You promote this Terriamon, use the effect to play Willis for one, you flip a new egg, and you try to put a new Terriamon in the back. And that kind of facilitates an Ukomon esque effect while giving you the important effect of reducing a Rapid or Gargo evolution every turn onwards by tapping it. Now, that is probably your best turn to play is promoting this Terriamon and playing this Willis. It's probably the most beneficial thing you can do in the early game. Uh, other ways to facilitate this combo. You could promote and have a, any Terriamon, like not necessarily that one. Let's just say you had to promote this Terriamon. But let's say you had Mimi. You played Mimi last turn to pass turn. That was probably your turn one playing this. Now you've promoted this turn. You got this Terriamon out. Great, you can successfully play the wheel. Sadly, it's for three. But at least you can, you know, generate some drawing and just aggression in the back. And that's kind of what this deck's all about. Low to the ground aggression. You you can very easily climb back into a new Rapid Mon because you've got cards like Mimi and Willis continuously flipping your eggs. You've got cards like Hidden Potential, sorry, wrong one, a Double Typhoon that are continuously generating Euteriumons on board as long as you're not blocked out of playing by effect. So let's get into the options because that was a lot of chat on the Tamers. But once again, Green Tamers is kind of bad. Not going to lie, guys. Outside of Mimi, Green Tamers is just kind of bad, especially Henry, which is sad because he's searchable and Willis isn't, but we want to play Willis, but that's how it is. In potential discovered was my one of. It probably should have come last. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Uh, it's obviously the best green option, but Double Typhoon is incredible. What a sensational card. I see lists still not play this at three, uh, four rather, but you know, 
everyone can play their own ratios, but man, a card that suspends two out of security and is a searcher on your turn for a green Digimon and Tamer is kind of crazy. Not to mention delay effect to play Terriamons, which can just let you search again. I really love this card. It saves me out of sec. And it's just good. Like, I, I don't know what else to say, guys. I would say please play 4 Double Typhoon. <laughs> it's really freaking good. Not much more to say. Um, yeah, card could. The kind of budget version, you could say, is Agility Training. This card's still very good because it lets you go into some of your Megas once again, going into this, or going into our lovely Mega Gargamon Ace. I keep putting it away and having to find it. Going into either of these for two less can be ridiculous. As I mentioned, going through this on your turn can be scary. But this can make it cost a lot less and actually make it a quite good play. And of course, the ace leaving the field is scary, and that's why sometimes we'll just use it to go into this instead. But you know what? Sometimes there's just games where you use it to go into this for cheap, or if you have Willis up, then you can tap Willis and go into it for free. Sometimes that's all you need because you just needed to climb up. So agility is still always good, and obviously it can add the green tamers. And once again, I know some people are scared there's only four green tamers, but they're really not that important anymore outside of the level five rapid mon needing them for protection. So, um,. We'll move on to our techs. Uh, I'm going to put the one out that was the best tonight. Hidden Potential Discovered. I mean, there's no surprise. This is the best green card. It's an insane. Um, card good. Card good. you got to play it. Uh, I thought you wouldn't play it in Terrymon, right? You think deck's low to the ground? Like, why would you need Hidden Potential? Like, you're not going into Quartz or, like... Well, you can play Quartz. But you're not going into, like, Bloom Lord or, like, you know, a bunch of Vegetation cards and, like, spamming the board, really. But the fact that Double Typhoon plays out and sometimes you just hard play Terriers to pass and search anyway, this can just help make use of that. Um, but, yeah, um, I would never cut this from pretty much any green deck, really, uh, outside of, like, a green OTK stack deck. But, anyway. Uh, One Heaven's Judgment. This card, it was between this and uh, Giant Missile. I really like Giant Missile. But you know what Giant Missile doesn't do? Combo with this. So I'm not just talking about having two colors, which means it's neg 18. I mean, you could just do that with a level four rapid one. This beautiful guy says, if your opponent's Digimon is reduced to zero DP, I gain two memory. So you effectively play this for five. Heaven's Judgment for five, by the way. That's like mega death level of option, right? That's kind of insane. So there was a couple of games today where I did play Heavens or Heavens. Um, yeah, I did play Heavens and I had this out and I just gained back the two. So, you know, choked my opponent nicely. I thought that was a sensational synergy. And obviously I'm playing four of this. I might go up on this, but the reason I'm only playing one removal spell this format is because I'm kind of scared of the Magnet X matchup and removal does kind of be useless in that matchup. Let's be real. Uh, it can be good, but it's typically not. So um, I'm just playing the one heavens for now. I might change that later. But yeah, that's what I thought for now. And it comboing with this is nice. But I like the giant missile is a bit more generic. Like I can just have a Terriamon or egg in the back and I can giant missile, right? And it's good value. If I just have a rookie in the back and I heavens, like I get no value. So heavens is like more high roll than giant missile, but it's it's cheaper. And in theory can wipe out more of a board than giant missile. But giant missile definitely has merit, but I've cut it from this list, sadly. Fire rocket. Card... Didn't get used today. It came out of sec and deleted a blocker once. Outside of that, I didn't ever use it for the sec boss one, which is sad because it was so good last set for that. But now we're running out of deck space. And this feels like the first card to get cut. Like I won all my games tonight without using this and I never really wanted it. I never went, damn, I wish I had sec one. Like I was happy making trades with the board and Rapid X makes so many damn trades with the board, guys. It's crazy. So um, even the piercing was like kind of whatever. I didn't really mind if I had it or not. So this is kind of the same, but the sec one was like kind of like, this could have been a Death X, like quite comfortably a Death X, and I would have been happy. This could have been like Quartz Mar, probably not Quartz. I don't know, you don't really need it, but you could play it for sure. But anyway, definitely a slot I'm going to change in future. Heaven still seems to be valuable, so I think I'm keeping these two. And the next two, uh, these are probably going to get changed. So we've got the Sparkle of Fate. To be honest, I think Sparkle of Fate's good. I just didn't see it when it would have been good tonight. Against Numamon tonight, this would have been sensational, but I just didn't see it. And by the time I drew it, the game was over. But Sparkle of Fate basically lets you go from any Rapid or Gargo into another Rapid Mon in name. And then um, it costs three, so it'll make it just cost three regardless because the evolution is then free. So if it does cost four or something from Rapid to Rapid X, it's now three, which is nice. But mainly it gives you that effect where effect can't reduce the DP of this Digimon. So it's pretty good. It's only till the end of the opponent's turn, but it's good. And the security effect is quite good too. Play a level 3 Digimon with Terriamon in name from hand or trash without paying cost, then add this to hand. So that can play Terriamon X anybody because it just said Terriamon in name, which is good. Also note it doesn't say to play a Lotmon, another reason why we're just not going to play a Lotmon. 
Um, not that we're going to base the whole deck around this card, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just another anti-synergy of Lotmon. And I've always been, sadly, a Lotmon, uh, not hater, but just, like, never believed in the Alliance Lotmon card that much. I just don't think it's that great. On release of that card, the Reddit, like, Digi Reddit was going crazy about it, and I was really like, this card's not that great, and I got hella downvoted. <laughs> and I was just like, guys, I'm being realistic. Like, I'm testing the card. It's not very good. And they're like, oh, you played an alliance. Even in alliance, it's like everything has alliance anyway. And they're like, a double alliance. You got to have a third body out for that. It, it, it's a lot of copium from Lotmon enjoys. And look, I get it. I love Lotmon. I love Terrymon. But you just, I'm just very realistic about what cards are good and bad. As you can tell, I don't like any of the level four Gargos. I don't like any of the Henrys for the reason of they're not good guys. Okay, I'm not trying to be like, oh, playing these cards makes you bad or makes your deck worse. Well, I am kind of saying it makes the deck worse, but. You know, you can play whatever you want at the end of the day. I'm trying to play the most optimal way to win. Uh, and also high rarity, because high rarity is nice. But, um, yeah, I just didn't see any use in Sparkle of Fate today, sadly. I'm sure it has merit, and I'm sure I'm just not used to using it yet. So I think I might give it another go, but Fire Rocket's probably gone. Like, Fire Rocket was trash. Um, whether it becomes Giant Missile, another Heavens, Death X, probably something like that, because it's like the tech, we're getting the tech zone. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But let me know what you're playing in the comments. I was thinking Token and Marimon to kind of try to deal with Magnarex, but that's kind of a meme. But uh, anyway, obviously, this, these two options, like, th this is the best. You'll never cut this. This is like, yeah, if you want, you can cut it. I want to try this one more time, and yeah, this is this is probably getting flipped. Outside of that, uh, I don't know if I changed too much else in the deck. The Tamer lineup seemed good. The other options all seemed good. As I, oh, I did mention, I'd probably maybe cut one of these. So my only changes so far are probably... Uh, these two, but you know what? I'm gonna keep testing and see what I think about all that But let me know what you think of the big Terry Mon profile. I've really loved playing this deck ever since it came out Yes, I've been playing this for a long time. So please forgive me if uh, You know, I don't know. I sound like Mean when I'm like, oh this card's bad. This card's bad. It's because I've been trying to make this work for so long And I know which cards are kind of lacking and which cards are absolutely packing and yeah, make sure you get yourself four Rapid X, because damn, this guy's this guy's nuts. I love this guy. Love Terriamon. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more, and I'll have all deck lists from my locals going up there too. I'll talk about my matchups real quick before you go. Round one was versing the wonderful new bug deck. That deck is cool, but unfortunately, like this deck is just a little too fast and kind of cheats into its six a bit quicker than they can get to their six. So I was able to kind of take out his fives and fours a lot. I think if the Tyrant came out a bit more, I would have probably had a lot of trouble and maybe lost. But I'll see when I burst that matchup again at Locals. Seems like a good deck, and the DP numbers I played in the Calamon came in clutch there, getting those high numbers. Um, once again, uh, Egg that gives DP boost good. Next matchup was Numamon. And can I just say, that matchup was unplayable before. Now it's playable thanks to Rapid X, and I was able to win it today. It was very close and good games. Super sensational games all today, actually. And yeah, just going to say it once again, Rapid X really makes the Numa 1 matchup playable because before their DP reduction and their D Digivolve would out all of your aces and your armors, like there's nothing you can really do about it. But now we have a card that literally says, lol, all your board is going to go neg 4 if you try to be aggro. It really saves that matchup, really, really does. Anyway, next we had Imperial for the finals. New Imperial is very scary. The new Paeldramon is very good. The new Dragon Mode is very good. The new Fighter Mode is very good. So that is kind of scary. The new Tamer is quite good too. So I found, once again, going into Rapid X early was quite good. But also game one, he just steamrolled me with a combo. Game two and three, I got really lucky. Uh, game two, there was a bit of back and forth. Game three, he kind of just bricked. So luckily, I won all my games today. Obviously, that's how I won. But I think going forward, I'm going to have to tech the deck out. One, to beat Magna, because you'll notice I didn't beat Magna today. So... Pardon me, I'll take that with a grain of salt, this deck list at least, because I do not have, uh, I do have experience into Magna, I've been testing it quite a bit against my cousin online, um, we, we've been playing the Rapid Magna matchup for a while now. It is really intricate and it's really interesting, and things can go so right and so wrong so quickly, and a lot of it comes down to do they have Blinding Ray or not, but um, can't wait to talk about that more in future when I hopefully try to win again, or when Dave wins locals with Magna, and he can tell you all about it. But anyway, thanks for watching me on the Big Terrium on YouTube Gaming. And I'll catch you guys next time. Don't forget to do all the fun stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you liked about the list. Tell me what you didn't like about the list. Because you know what? 
I'm critical of the cards. You can be critical with me too. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you hate. I'm not going to get offended. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and playing. See ya.